the first poem of yours I ever encountered, mm -hmm. The Last of Oberyn. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is one strange fellow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. I, I want to be known as one, as one strange fellow. You know, what's the point of being known as anything else? Yeah. Right? Right. So that's a poem having to do with um, the hearing of the tune of the Lass of Ockram, which of course is a, a song that for many people is associated with James Joyce's story, The Dead. It's the song that's sung uh, by Bartle Darcy, uh, the tenor that reminds Greta Conroy of her love for Michael Fury. So um, in this case, the, the song, the tune is heard uh, being played on the, um, the tibia, the tibia, I think it was, yes, the, the tibia, tibia of a priest somewhere in the, in the jungles of the forests of uh, somewhere in South America. But um, on the Amazon, but um, you know, so that image of the tibia, the flute made of a human tibia, I think is probably where it started. And um, you know, um, it's a striking image. Yes. I mean, I, I'm a believer really in, in a strange way in poems being found, mm. you know? They come to you, they announce, if you're very lucky, if you're patient, if you're quiet, if you're humble, they'll come to you. Uh, they're there. They're just there. It's just there. And it's just, all you have to do is just allow it to come to you. So um, in that sense, I belong to, um, among other traditions, one of the traditions I belong to, like many poets, is the troubadour tradition. And the, strictly speaking, the term troubadour, il trovatore, of course, means someone who stumbles upon stuff, someone who finds stuff, someone to whom things come. Mm. So that's one of my, you know, main. There's another side to it too, which is having when it comes, you have to be able to do something with it, right? Right. And uh, you have to know, you know, you have to have some uh, ability, I suppose, to. To, to make it work, mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, it uh, it's about it um, having the capacity to work pretty much on its own. So I don't even think of myself as anything other than a kind of tibia, mm -hmm. a kind of a big tibia <laughs> on which things are played, right? I don't, I don't think of myself as a, even as a. even as the author of these poems, you know? That's wonderful. I don't think of myself in those terms at all. I think, I look at them, when I look at them, and I think, who the hell wrote that? <laughs> you know, who is that strange person yeah. who wrote that thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm in, I want, that's the way I want it to be. I don't ever want to be able to say, ha, huh, I wrote that. I know what that means, I know what it is. Actually, probably at that stage, I'd quit. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that you brought up Troubadour mm. because you've, you've um, brought the, the words back to the music. I stumbled upon, I gave the Pope a rhino, mm. or um, mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen the movie, but I read the book. <laughs> okay. Uh, just, just wonderful Well, songs. thank you so much. That's very kind of you. I appreciate that. And opera as well. Uh -huh. I try, I try. <laughs> um, Vera Vegas, or, uh -huh. or is is anything happening with with Grand Concourse? Not at the moment, I think. No, I mean, I've always got two or three projects uh, in the hand. You know, we have an interesting new project actually uh, I, that I did uh, with a composer called Dan Truman and a great singer called Irla O'Leonard, which is opening shortly in Chicago. It's a piece called Oligon. And it's a revisiting of various aspects of the Cúchulainn story, Cúchulainn Maeve, and, and uh, <coughs> the, the Ailil, the main characters in the Toyn, the great Irish cattle raiding epic. And uh, so we have a piece called um, Olegon, as I said, that's, that's uh, opening shortly. Um, 
And I've always got a project in hand of some kind, but uh, because I'm, I'm interested in music, and I love, I'd love to write a musical, I'd love to write an opera. Um, it's just, it's an art form that uh, fascinates me, and I try to write songs. I, I love the fact that that your interests are are, are in across you know platforms of well, art. Well, yeah, I mean it's a dangerous thing in some ways because of course when you do go across you know there's this phrase, jack of all trades, master of none. Right. I, but you know what? Who cares? Yeah. I actually, you know, if people want to say that about me. Fine, that's okay doesn't bother me. I'm interested in lots of things, and I think most poets are. Right. You know, I, I try to paint a little bit in a very oh, half-assed kind of way. You know, yeah. I mean, again, image-driven, music-driven, it's all part of the same thing. Fantastic. We're almost out of time. Mm -hmm. Do you care to read anything from the book? Oh, what do we see? Let's see where, you know what I'll read, uh, maybe, uh, let's see, it's not exactly where it opens, but uh, um, here's one. Why Brownlee Left. Why Brownlee Left and where he went is a mystery, even now. For if a man should have been content, it was him. Two acres of barley, one of potatoes, four bullocks, a milker, a slated farmhouse. He was last seen going out to plough on a March morning bright and early. By noon Brownlee was famous. They had found all abandoned. With the last rig unbroken, his pair of black horses like man and wife, shifting their weight from foot to foot and gazing into the future. Magnificent. Wonderful. I have just one. Can I ask my fun question? Not yet. Okay. When they told my grandfather that he would get the farm, he got on a boat and went to the U.S. <laughs> it's a common enough story. I mean, it's a story one hears. It's a kind of urban myth in many ways. Uh, but I, actually, a lot of people, you know, one hears of people, <clears throat> you know, who go out for a pint to buy a pint of milk, never seen again. And I mean, I, <laughs> it's a terrible thing to say, but, you know, I think we've all felt that. I mean, mm -hmm. I, a couple of times in my life, I sort of have done that, in fact, <laughs> you know, I've actually thought, okay, you know what, that's it, wow. I'm gone, I'm out of here. All right, sir, your fun question. I always ask a fun question at the end, and that is, sir, Lennon or McCartney? Well, the combination is extraordinary, but I am a McCartney fan. Oh, okay. And, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, Can't go wrong with either. Well, you know, I went to see Paul McCartney the other day, and uh, I mean, he's extraordinary. I mean, he played a three-hour show, and um, <laughs> he doesn't even. I mean, here I am drinking my water, you know. Yeah. Paul McCartney does not drink water in the course of that three-hour show. Wow. He does not have a glass of water. Yeah. This guy is amazing. He's a he's a pro. Oh. And you know he's been doing that since you know the, late 50s. the Reaper bomb. Yeah, the Reaper bomb, exactly. And uh, his, you know, he's an extraordinary force, and he's still writing fabulous songs. Oh, absolutely. And uh, actually, I'm involved in a little project with him at the moment. Really? So I have to send the card. <laughs> Tell him I said love. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Pleasure. I really appreciate it. Thank you.